Some say that it's a code sent to us from God. That's kind of interesting. So I'm just saying these general things to give you an outline of the scheme we're going to follow. And then I'm also going to illustrate these moods by playing music appropriate to them. Now then. Let's go back to the fundamental assumption that all people, and this also includes all beings whatsoever, but we're talking mainly, of course, about human beings, all people are manifestations, disguises of the total reality behind this cosmos. And that if that is so, there are not any mistakes. When you look at patterns on the foam of the breaking waves on the seashore, when you look at the outlines of mountains, and the grain in wood, and the markings on marble, you notice that it never makes an aesthetic mistake. Never. Also, when you study plants, and you go into their relationships with each other and with insects. The fact that the so-called diseases of plants are the full life of some other kind of organism having a ball. And you see this complexly interrelated world and you realize that it all hangs together. That everything outside the human world is a system of balances where you couldn't have really any form of life without the others going on too. There have to be friends and there have to be enemies. Because if there aren't enemies, the friends get too prosperous and they kill themselves by their excess of exuberance. So they are constantly being pruned by various kinds of enemy species. Could there possibly be an unequivocal mathematical proof that the Torah was given by a supreme being? A scientific proof? A proof that can be objectively examined using mathematics? The answer is yes. Believe it or don't, here it comes. It is well known that each letter in the Hebrew alphabet has a numeric value. For example, Aleph equals one, Bet equals two, Gimel equals three, and so on. What is the connection between the numeric values of ancient Hebrew letters and scientific data of the 21st century? Apparently, words in the Holy Hebrew language convey more information than we thought. What information do we convey when we say simple Hebrew words like Uriah, Moon, or Shemesh, Sun? Could NASA's scientific data about the size and the mass of these celestial objects be hidden within these words?
Now, what about then the authority of these scriptures? Uh, we can take this problem in two steps. A lot of people don't know how we got the Bible at all. We Westerners got the Bible thanks to the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church and members of the Church wrote the books of the New Testament. And they took over the books of the Old Testament, which even by the time of Christ had not been finally decided upon by the Jews. Their objective is always not ideas, not doctrines, but a method. A method for the transformation of consciousness. That is to say, for a transformation of your sensation of who you are. And I emphasize the word sensation because it's the strongest word we have for feeling directly. When you put your hand on the corner of a table, you have a very definite feeling. And when you are aware of existing, you also have a definite feeling. But in the view of these methods or disciplines, the ordinary person's definite feeling of the way he exists and who he is, is a hallucination. To feel yourself as a separate ego, a source of action and awareness that is entirely separate and independent from the rest of the world, somehow locked up inside a bag of skin, is seen as a hallucination. That you are not a stranger in the earth, comes into this world either as a result of a natural fluke or uh, being a sort of spirit that comes from somewhere else altogether. But that you, in your fundamental existence, you are the total energy that constitutes this universe, playing that it's you playing that it's this particular organism and even playing that it's this particular person because the fundamental game of the world is a game of hide and seek that is to say that the colossal reality the energy that is everything that is a unitary energy that is one plays at being many, at manifesting itself in all these particulars that we call you and 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 this and that and all around us. And it's fundamentally a game. Artificial. The computers are scanning it and finding tension points where it's artificially projected and gravity's bleeding in to this universe. That's what they call dark matter. So we're like a thought or a dream that's a wisp in some computer program, some God's mind, whatever. They're proving it all. It's all coming out. Yo, Hebrews, all math. It's all numbers. You know that? Yeah, look. The ancient Jews used Hebrews in the miracle system. Eh? Each letter's a number. Like the Hebrew A, Aleph, it's one. B, Bet, it's two. You understand? But look at this. The numbers are interrelated. Like, take the Hebrew word for father. Av, Aleph, Bet. One, two, equals three. All right? Hebrew word for mother, Aim, Aleph, Mem, 140 equals 41. Sum of 3 and 41, 44. All right? Now, Hebrew word for child. All right? Mother, father, child. Yelad. That's 10, 30, and 4. 44. 
Torah is just a long string of numbers. Some say that it's a code sent to us from God. That's kind of interesting. Yeah, that's just kid stuff. Check this out, okay? The word for the Garden of Eden, Kadem. Numerical translation, 144. Now, the value of tree of knowledge, all right, in the garden, right? Eitz Hachayim, 233. 144, 233. And you can those take those numbers. numbers. So, the, you know, like the Fibonacci sequence? Fibonacci. Fibonacci is um, an Italian mathematician in the 13th century. If you divide 144 into 233, the result approaches um, theta. Theta? Theta. The Greek symbol for golden ratio, golden spiral. Wow. I never saw that before. That's like that series you find in nature? Like the face of a sunflower? Wherever the spirals. You see this math everywhere. NASA says the North Pole is actually moving. <laughs> That's right. Scientists say the Earth's magnetic North Pole is shifting. Compasses use polar points to help correct navigation systems. So how is this going to impact you, you ask? What does this mean? Yeah, kind of, <laughs> this is kind of normal, right? It does right. happen. It does happen. So we're not talking about the axis rotation uh -huh. shifting, right. the actual North and South Poles. Those aren't moving. Right. It's all the stuff under the Earth that lets the compass needle go in the right direction. That's liquid iron and nickel, so it mm -hmm. kind of floats around a little bit, 2,000 miles under our feet. Incredible. So the pole, the magnetic pole, not the actual North Pole, drifts around a little bit. Hello. My name is Roland Legrand. I'm an astrologer, and today I would like to try and analyze the different uh, configurations that will uh, probably affect the world uh, at large in a very, very historical way in 2020 because of those uh, planets that are uniting in some signs uh, according to the zodiac. Uh, these signs are going to, and these planets and the influences of the planets are going to have a very, very strong influence on us all. People don't really understand it until you actually see it coming at you in a wall of flame.